Metropolitan State University of Denver in partnership with Chicano Studies and Journey Through Our Heritage is proud to present the Voices of Ludlow. At your seats, three of you will find paper with names and ages written on them. If the name in front of you isn't read, know that you have died directly or indirectly as a result of dangerous mining conditions or company abuse. The powers that be, those in control, for unnecessary and unjust reasons, one day decided that you are inferior, that what you have to say doesn't count, that the health and safety of your familia, tus amigos, y tu comunidad is irrelevant. It is because of this that we ask that you please do not think of these sheets as just paper, but as an identity, an identity of a person who deserves to be heard. We ask that for their sake, you forget the name your parents gave you when you were born, but take on the name that has been bestowed on you today. And we ask that you no longer think of your voice as your own, but one that you share with someone whose mouth has been silenced for years by an oppressive hand that's blacker than the minds you worked in. So please, when we call on you, state your name, how you live, and perhaps how you died. Let us hear your voices today, so that the voices of thousands of miners will be remembered. Now let us begin our jornada. We present to you Lolo, Colorado, 1914. <laughs> I was born in 1884 in my home of Greece on the island of Crete. I was once known as Elias Anastasio Spartidakis, but in America they call me Louis Tikis. My journeymen refer to me as the Strategos, the strategic general of the United Mine Workers. I have led many men out of the putrid working conditions that we labor in every day, seven days a week, Monday to Sunday. I stand strong to expose these corporate, these corporate cowards who, especially, especially that infamous industrialist Rockefeller. <laughs> We work for 45 cents a ton of coal. They blacken our lungs <sighs> every day is a struggle because you never know if you're going to drop dead from the black lung or if, you're, if a mine shaft will collapse on you. Before I began my journey to America, we were promised prosperity. These promises were not met. This is why we must unite to seek the rights that we deserve in the mines for the work and labor that we struggle for. We live in the dark. We rise in the morning as the sun does, but we descend into the mines before the sun fully rises to emerge from when the sun sets on us. But one day, the spotlight will shine on us. I see light at the end of the tunnel. Spring is coming, which will bring a new beginning. Which brings Greek Easter this Sunday. It's the time when my people unite. But this year, I will unite with my fellow miners. And we will, we will fight against the, the military mercenaries who prey on innocent women and children. <laughs> Got something for them. Join us or you're against us. May our voices ring in your head like a deafening detonation in a mine shaft. My mama and my little sister were ill from fright. The death special was littering murderous bullets on my camp. I, as the man of the house, took it upon myself to fetch my family water. That's when I became 
first one to die. I was shot. The bullet went straight through my head. I guess he's Lucy I never had a sister chance. Rumors of the death toll said two women, beloved children, all Italian immigrants. This was a lie. There was many Mexican and Greek children who suffered the same fate. My name is William Snyder Jr. I'm 11 years old. My family immigrated from Italy for a better life in the United States. How is it a better life? How do you justify my death? How do you justify the death of all these innocent souls? How? Me llamo Frank Rubino. The Padrones took us here from Italy, promising us prosperity and wealth. They lied. There were many kinds of padrinos. The ones I knew, they were employment agents who would provide occasional work for individual immigrant workers, those who found themselves in foreign environments, unable to speak English. <coughs> One of us said, the working conditions here are so deplorable, we are worse off than dogs attached to chains. Tell your former employer, we would be happier in Italy living in pig pens than living here. Some papers said that of a hundred paisani, only 40 survived. When they started shooting, who was there to protect us? The padron? No. The priest? No. We were sure that we would die. My name is James Black Kyler. I'm 43 years old and I'm from Wales. Like every wave of immigrants, we left our homeland of Wales in the dirtiest and most dangerous jobs. When I arrived in America, hardly anyone spoke our language. That made it hard to communicate and also to make friends here. In our camp, we were speaking 24 different languages and the only thing that we had in common with each other was the determination to be treated like humans rather than machines. Many people wanted to go back to their homelands instead of living here in the so-called land of opportunity where we weren't getting compensated for the amount of work we did and the risk we took every day. Some decided to stick it out to try and live their American dream. This Greek fellow named Louis Tikus told us to strike with him, but we were, a lot of us were afraid because this company would blackball and fire all miners that attempted to assemble. What could be worse than I'm already doing? So I decided to strike with him. I hope that my decision is not in vain. Hello, my name is Michael Valdez, 40-year-old Afro-Mexican miner. You want to know about oppression? I know oppression. I've lived a life of oppression. Whenever I think I have a hard time, I think back at my African slaves being pushed into the Gulf Coast by the Spanish conquistas, Spanish colonias. Once, once Mexico got its freedom from Spain, the needs of these black Mexicans were ignored. This continued for years, even as I was growing up. It was hard for us to get a job, mainly because they called us colored. We suffered from something that they call institutional racism. This pushed me to a pit of despair. I had no family, no friends, but luckily I found love. As I found my wife, her family pushed her away because of her love for me. It was because of this that we decided to move our children to America in search of our dreams. I quickly learned this was a bad idea. Working for Rockefeller, getting scripts, it was hard to put food on the table. It wasn't until long that I was putting my own children to work. As my children were working, my wife was at home, carrying on the fight. It wasn't long that Rockefeller sent his goons and killed my wife and children. My name is Patria Valdez. I'm 37 years old, Mexicana. My husband, my three children, and I 
moved from the Norte de Nuevo Mexico to Colorado for a better life, una mejor vida. Because life is hard here at Ludlow, we help each other out in order to survive, otherwise we will not make it. We even help Madre Mary Jones organize some of the protests. Again, life is really hard here and it's miserable. The disease is spreading quickly, the enfermedades están propagando. There are no doctors to see my poor sick children or the other children. We're exhausted, we're tired, everything is rationed here. When our demands were not met, we moved on to the land. Myself, my children, 13,000 other people. <coughs> land owned by ex-miners who sympathize with the union. Pero, un día de Pascua por la mañana, on Greek Easter Day, we were shot. My children, other children, other women. What have we done to deserve a death like this? Que hicimos? This is not the life I envisioned for my family. God, Padre Nuestro, te pido que guíes a mi esposo porque todavía está en las minas. I ask you, Heavenly Father, to please guide my husband as he still in my
I've been mining now for 27 years back in West Virginia. We use advanced systems to remove it and store natural gas. We travel 30 minutes by car to get to our work sites. I've been a part of the unit now for 23 years as a full-time employee. I've been able to put my kids through college and I plan on retiring in eight years. I gotta say that I'm blessed. I'm still alive. I mean, Unlike them fellow miners back in April, on April 5th of 2010 in Raleigh County at the Big Branch Coal Mine, 124 died, and the numbers have risen nationally 321. They say it was the worst explosion in the good, good old U.S. of A. since 1970. But shoot, I'm lucky. Thank <laughs> you. Visions for their people even to this day. Let's take a trip to modern day South Africa. Let us hear what their voices have to say. My name is Nicole Mobio. I was born to a young mother in Johannesburg, South Africa. I went to school until I was in second grade. And then, at age nine, I began working in the mines. I have mined gold and diamonds for less than four American dollars a day. <coughs> the foremans, they beat the workers. The police, they arrest us for no cause. We have no justice. I've seen men die from unsafe mining conditions. Our minds are not up to our current standards. There is no justice for us. More rights for minors. So now that we've heard from South Africa, you can see that conditions are really bad. Things don't change. As we head deeper into the continent, as we go to West Africa, we will soon find out. My name it is unknown because I, apart from my people, that ring on your finger, that diamond in your ear, the diamond around your neck, where, where do you think it comes from? Is it a blood diamond? No. The jeweler told you it's a hot diamond. So you was like, I'm going to buy it anyway because it's a hot diamond and not a blood diamond. Well, I hate to inform you of the truth, but it is the same thing. I worked in the diamond mines. I worked in the gold mine, wherever I could work to make money for my family. But after the Civil War, the rebels came in and they made us work in the diamond mines to support their forces to support their war, to support their cause, which we did not believe in. And when we did not work, they killed us, shot me in the chest, left me for dead on the ground. But then, they would have went two inches to the left, I would have been dead. The people that came and revived me, but they took my kids. So that ring on your finger, that ring on your, that diamond on your neck, that diamond in your ear, maybe I mind it, maybe my kids mind it, maybe one of my kids didn't, you never know, but it may be a blood diamond. The reason they call it a blood diamond is because my people have shed their blood for the cause to kill other people just to make money. Do not, do 
not. I repeat this, do not. Do not let this story of mine, which is not the story of only me, but the story of my people, go unheard. Do not let it go unheard. Say it with me now. Do not let it go unheard. Thank you. Why are there conditions for, for minors? 